Spirit of the Lord say, this could be the beginning of the finest hour for the body of Christ. Amen. It all depends on your perspective. It depends on who you are listening to. Are you tuned in into the channels that only say what the world knows? Or are you tuning in into the channel that is releasing what the word of God says in this season? Be at peace. Grab your Bibles with me this morning. Let's lift up our Bibles and let's make our confession. Are you ready to make the confession? Uh, media guys, are you ready for us to make the confession? Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You got your Bible? Lift it up in the air. Wave it in the air. Tell the devil, you can't take this away from me. I've got the word of God. I've got the light of God. You can't scare me. I have the word of God. Let's repeat together. This is my Bible. I believe it's an infallible, incorruptible word of the living God. I believe I am whom he says I am. And I can do what he says I can do. I open up my heart this day to receive from God's holy word. And I declare that it will profit and prosper my life. Faith comes and increases in me as a result of God's holy word. Amen. Would you turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3? Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to read the first 10 verses together. It's quite a bit of reading. Flow with me. You will enjoy it. Exodus chapter 3, we're going to read from verses 1 to 10 together this morning. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right. Some of you are cheating. You have digital Bibles. Let the people with the real Bible say amen. amen. <laughs> There's something about the word on paper. It carries more anointing. It carries more anointing when it's on paper. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Praise God. Thank God for whatever you have. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. 3, 2, 1, go. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I am surely seeing the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress you. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I read the 10th verse once again alone. Come now, therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I want you to look at somebody around you within social distance from you. Just say to that person, Bible days are here again. Days are here again. 
Look at somebody else. Again, make sure there's the social distance between you. Don't let them get too close. Say to that person, Bible days are here again. Brethren, I want you to understand this morning that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. And the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. There is nothing new under the sun. This morning, I believe I have a mandate from the Lord to bring you a word that will better prepare you for the season that we're in now. I believe this is a prophetic word. And I pray that this word will go far and wide. As many people as possible will hear it so that they'll be enriched and empowered in this season. The title of my sermon today is Pharaohs, Plagues, and Prophets. Pharaohs, Plagues, and Prophets. Let's bow our heads for prayer. So Father, I ask for your grace that you are anointed. I ask Father God for help from heaven above for the ministry of this word today lord i thank you father god that no weapon of the enemy from the flesh against us will be able to hinder or distract the preaching of your word Amen. everything will work together including media equipment video equipment father that we may all profit and prosper as a result of the preaching of your word this day in jesus mighty name we are praying amen. amen and amen and and you may be seated. First of all, this morning, I want to talk to you about this concept that I call ancient landmarks and ancient devils. Someone say ancient landmarks and ancient devils. Turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Please let's be very sensitive this morning. Let's be very prayerful. And don't be used to be a distraction. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. The devil is a liar. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, got it. Ecclesiastes chapter nine. Sorry, chapter one, verses nine and ten. That which has been is what will be, and that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, "See, this is new"? It has already been in ancient times. Before us. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. Please stay with me. Try very hard to avoid distractions. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing that you and I would experience in our world today that has never happened before or has not been foretold in the past. Even what will come in the end of days has already been foretold. Hence, a careful study of God's word will help us to identify ancient landmarks and devils and then know what we ought to do. Listen, there is nothing that we're experiencing in our world today that is new. Nothing is new. Nothing is new. If you study the word of God, you would see it has happened before. There are ancient landmarks that we can go check out because the devil we're dealing with is an ancient devil. And if we can understand truth from the word of God, we would know how to navigate our lives regardless of what the situation may look like today. Now, I told you I would speak to you about Pharaoh's plagues and prophets. Who is a Pharaoh? Who are the Pharaohs? This is a type of the wicked men with money, power, and influence. Men who are vulnerable to be used by Satan to fulfill his agenda on the earth because they do not know Jehovah God. 
The spirit of Pharaoh is a spirit that terrorizes with fear and ultimately enslaves. So we're not just talking about one Pharaoh in the Bible now. We're talking about that same spirit of a Pharaoh. Because that spirit still exists today and there are men in our world with money, with power, with influence, control over the media, control over businesses, control over industries that because they don't know God, they are vulnerable to yield themselves to agendas that are agendas of the devil. Stay with me. So then who are the prophets? The prophets are the ones that hear from the God of heaven and have the responsibility of declaring the now word of God to deliver people from ignorance and enslavement. The prophets must be bold because they have to come against pharaohs and their systems. Please listen to me very, very carefully. In a time like this, there are two voices that are strong. The voices of the Pharaoh and its system and the other voice that must be very strong is the voice of the prophet that is declaring the word of the Lord. Now, what are plagues? Plagues are manifestations of evil happenings such as pestilences and diseases that threaten to kill many. Plagues are permitted from heaven to get the attention of pharaohs and the covenant people of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you better understand that nothing can manifest except it is permitted. Plagues are to get the attention of pharaohs as well as God's children. They are signs and wonders that ultimately display what is possible in our world. Right now, what we call a pandemic in our world is nothing different from plagues that have existed in Bible days. Nothing different. It's the same thing. But the big challenge today is that many of God's covenant children are mistaking the plagues for God's abandonment. And many are afraid that the plague will destroy them. You've got to listen to this very carefully. Plagues are not to destroy God's covenant children, but an opportunity to experience what we are made of. It is an opportunity for our Father to display His power to shake the earth and His love and protection for His kids. That's what plagues are. And this is the reason why God will speak to Moses, his prophet, to give him a message that is appropriate to the people so that the people will understand when you see the manifestation of the plagues, whether it's pestilence, whatever it is, be not afraid. The Bible records 10 different plagues that happened in the days of Moses and Pharaoh. By the third one, God told Moses, tell the people, anything that happens from now, you will be untouched. God said, tell the people, when the pestilence comes and kills animals, none of your own animals will die. Now, what is God doing here? God is beginning to show Pharaoh and the system of Pharaoh and the people who do not believe in God and are worshipping false God. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, watch now. I'm about to display what I can do for my own covenant children. You will experience shakings. But in those shakings, you will see my hand over the life of my own children. My brothers and sisters, may I remind you again, you are not to fear plagues. As a matter of fact, you're not to tolerate fear at all in your life. Remember, 
Last week when I was sharing, I told you, I said, fear is strong emotion caused by the anticipation of a negative outcome or the awareness of danger. So, in the absence of the voice of a prophet of God, it's possible that the children of God are also anticipating danger, anticipating negative outcomes. Why? Because you have not heard from God. So the whole world is screaming and the whole world is afraid. And then you, a child of God, is afraid too. Where is your confidence? Who are you listening to? Whose child are you? May I remind you, my brothers and sisters, again, that many times fear is nothing but the acronym false evidence appearing real. F-E-A-R. For those of you who are watching wherever you are, false evidence appearing real. Unfortunately, fear is powerful like faith. It's a magnetic force. It attracts the negative outcome you do not want. Just like faith attracts the positive outcome you don't want. But in the absence of real godly faith, fear will grip you. Fear will arrest you. Fear can render you useless. As it is already doing in our nation right now to the majority of the people who don't know God. The people out there that make a mockery of Christians and say Christians are the ones who need a crutch. All these religious people, they need a crutch. How come you're not coming outside now? Why are you afraid of dying? Oh, there's no heaven, there's no hell. Really? If our world really believed there's no heaven, there's no hell, I'm just going to close my eyes. So why is everybody afraid to die? And this is just a virus. I wonder what it's going to be like in the end times. Let's talk about Pharaohs versus prophets. Because when God called Moses in the opening text that we read, it was a calling to be a prophet. Also a type of an apostle. An apostle is the sent one that is sent to a people to liberate a people. He was called as an apostle, but also he was called as a prophet. Why? Because God gave him his own word to declare. There was a word, the noun word of God, that cared nothing about what was going on in Egypt. And the noun word of God was, go to Pharaoh, tell him, let my people go. And go to the people and tell them that I, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, I've heard your cry and I've come to deliver you and I'm taking you out of bondage into a promised land. A land flowing with milk and honey. Ladies and gentlemen, you really need to think deeply about this. How do slaves, who have been slaves for many decades, how do they handle God's prophet and God's prophetic word? I will show you some things in a little while. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Let's look at verses 16 to 20. Exodus 3, 16 to 20. Is somebody getting something out of this? It says, go and gather the elders. Now, this is God speaking to Moses. Go and gather the elders and say to them, the Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham and of Isaac appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites and the Hezites and the Hamarites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will heed your voice, and you shall come, you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us, and now please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I am sure 
that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders. Did you see that? Did you see how God referred to the plagues? Wonders. Plagues are signs and wonders. Whether it's virus, companies shutting down, entertainment shutting down, they are signs to make you wonder. It's like, whoa, what's going on in my world? God said, I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. Please write this down. Number one, Pharaohs ignorantly agree with satanic agendas. Pharaohs ignorantly agree with satanic agendas. You better understand they exist in our world today. Incredibly powerful billionaires. We're conglomerates. Control media houses, control politicians. They exist in our world today. They ignorantly ag- agree with satanic agendas. Just like the Pharaoh at that time. He agreed with the, the thought, these Hebrews, let's enslave them. The Bible said there came a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph. And he just decided these guys are prospering, they're multiplying. Let's just come and let's oppress them. Let's kill all their male children so they don't have enough men that one day they can't rise up and fight against us. Those are the kind of things that pharaohs are subject to. Satanic agenda. Did you think that pharaoh really knew what the devil was trying to do was to exterminate the seed of Israel? He didn't. Are you with me? He didn't. Hitler was deceived. He thought he was creating a a pure breed by going after Jews and seeing to the annihilation of six million Jews. He did not know that he was a type of a pharaoh possessed by the devil himself. That's what pharaohs do. They do agendas of the devil and not even realize what they're doing. They could do biological warfare. Pharaohs can have the right scientists in the right lab looking at different strains of viruses and deciding which one will be most contagious. And Pharaohs can plan to release it. Pharaohs can plan to release things that is going to be incredibly destructive to our world so that fear would grip everybody in the world. And while everybody is afraid, they begin to give up their freedom. Number two. Pharaohs can become false prophets declaring the agenda of the devil. Because of influence and power over media, they can blast out, blast out to the whole world an agenda that is not the agenda of God. Remember, I'm not mentioning the names of any human being now. I'm dealing with the spirit because there is a real spirit that does this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered how the children of Israel, the descendants of Jacob, the Bible names 79 of them because Joseph was already in Egypt in Exodus chapter 1 that went down to Egypt. They were okay. Their father, Jacob, had a covenant with God. They were financially prosperous. They had money to buy their grain. A relative of theirs was Joseph, who was second in command. Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered how on earth did the Hebrews become enslaved? What could have caused them to give up their freedom? They were free people. They had a whole land of Goshen where they lived. The minute they had noticed any kind of ill treatment, why didn't they get up and leave? Why didn't they say, okay, fine, if you don't want us in our land, okay, that's fine. We're going back to our own land, but we're not going to take any rubbish from you. We came here as free men. We're prosperous. We have our animals. We wear our animals. We make it. How did it happen? It was just about three days ago that the Lord began to speak to me about the power of the spirit of fear. 
He said somehow the system of Pharaoh must have been changing the systems of the land and there were ways in which fear was introduced that began to grip the heart of the people to the point where when they began to change laws and change agendas, the people felt helpless. They were gripped with fear. There is no record anywhere in the Bible that there was a wall that surrounded Egypt to prevent people from leaving. The Bible tells us of Jericho. There was a wall around Jericho. The Bible tells us that even specifically, it said Jericho was greatly shut up. They built the wall. They put the gate there because they did not want the children of Israel to come in. When Moses did what was wrong and could have been found out, in Exodus chapter 2, the Bible said he left Egypt. There was no border that stopped him. There was no gate. Someone said, well, maybe Moses was raised in the, in the princely family. Maybe, you know, it was easy for him to walk out. Well, go read Exodus chapter 3 verse 27. When God spoke to Aaron and said, go look for Moses in the wilderness, the Bible said Aaron walked out. So what was stopping every other one from walking out? Fear. Something in the system had caused everybody to be so afraid. They couldn't go out. They were so afraid of the uncertainty. The Lord spoke to my heart many years ago. He said many were afraid of the wilderness. A wilderness is a place that you don't have any beating path. Unless God takes a prophet and leads a prophet first. And then the prophet comes and tells the other people, stop being scared. Come on, let's go. Everybody is going to stay put in their fear. Coronavirus is coming to kill us. Let's give up all our jobs, give up all our businesses, give up everything, give up all our rights. And when everything has been messed up in the economy, then we're going to begin to sign off our freedom if we're going to get government stimulus. You watch, it's about to happen. Before they decide who's going to get what. Only God knows what you're going to need to sign because they have to monitor to make sure you didn't get it twice. Only God knows what we might need to sign if this false food scarcity continues, because there's no food shortage in the United Kingdom, maybe we have to use our NI number before we can get two bags of rice. Maybe we're going to have to sign up for something new before we can buy pasta, just to make sure you're not buying too much pasta. Pay attention, brothers and sisters. There's some pharaoh systems that they're sneakily in a crafty way, introducing bondage and enslavement. How did that Pharaoh do it? How did they end up in the place where all the Hebrews were taking that rubbish from them? How did the Hebrews end up in the place where they had become such slaves? Wow. You're killing our first bonds. Are there no men in the land? Why could they not fight the system? I mean, real men will say, you know something, you will kill me first before you kill my child. What happened? Fear. This is how dangerous fear is. Let me tell you a little bit about prophets. Because right now, the real showdown, it is nothing new. It's always Pharaoh's versus prophets. Prophets are called to declare God's word and directly oppose the word and the deeds of Pharaoh's. Sometimes, even God's other children don't believe God's prophets. Exodus chapter 5, verse 20 and 21. The first time the prophet went before the Pharaoh and said, let my people go. The Pharaoh decided I would double their task. Listen to what the people who had originally said to Moses, we believe you. Let's go. As soon as the adverse circumstances came, what did they say? Verse 20. Then they came out from Pharaoh and they met Moses and Aaron who stood there to meet them and they said to them let the Lord look on you and judge because you have made us abhorrent in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants and put a sword in their hand to kill us all the prophets of God out there be ready you're not going to be popular for preaching against the Pharaoh system you can't be chicken and be a prophet. No. 
If you're going to declare the now word of God in the place where everybody's saying something different, get ready for persecution and get ready for persecution from your own church members. Those who are going to say, why is he putting people at risk? Why is he saying something that is contrary to what the whole system is saying? Because it's not popular. You don't come against the spirit of favor and just think it's going to be a dance in the park or walk in the park. Prophets must declare kingdom manifestations until God's kids and even Pharaoh believe in God. That's why God told Moses, I know Pharaoh is not going to roll over and play dead. Pharaoh is not just going to allow you to just come and declare the word of the Lord. Get ready for a fight. Attacks had come even before my mouth was open. And there were different areas where the enemy would look at the vulnerability and say, I'm going to take you out. You will not have a voice in this season. I will shut you down if not for just the grace and the mercy of God. Just manifestations of, of family related things. Things that could have caused incredible challenge within family. Wound your spirit. Hurt your soul. Why? Because Pharaoh does not want to let the people go. You watch in the news media. Every prophetic voice in our world today are going to be persecuted. They will be criticized. Oh, it hasn't started yet. You're going to see it. And many times not by the world. The Egyptians did not fight Moses once. It was his own people. It was his own people who made you a leader over us. It was his own people that said, you can be reckless if you want to, but you should have left us in our bondage. At least we were eating leeks and onions. At least we were by the soup pots. Now you come with your man of God's self telling us things that is going to risk our health. It's not going to be popular. And that is why prophets must declare kingdom manifestations until God's kids believe. You see, the age of us, the church, just being nice gathering of people, just a nice, beautiful sermon, everybody's just happy. Ladies and gentlemen, those days are over. The pharaohs have declared war. And we are put in the same category as every other category that has nothing to offer the people in the time of war. Have you noticed that hospitals don't get shut down? You know why? Hospitals are seen as the ones who help. Mm -hmm. Guess where viruses spread the most on record? Hospital. In the hospitals. But the church is seen as those ones just come together and sing. They're just a social club of people who say, so they say, you, you, we don't need you. Really? Who carries the power of God to heal? Oh who carries the power to deliver? Who are the ones who can bring healing to the things that medical doctors cannot do? Who are the ones who have the power not just to heal the body, but to heal the mind, the soul, and the spirit? We are put in the same category. You're not different from a school. Just go and sit down somewhere and keep your mouth shut. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you notice, stimulus package does not include churches. The last time I checked in my Bible, James chapter 5, James said, is there any sick amongst you? Let them call the elders and let the elders anoint them with oil. For the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That is the church that Jesus left on the earth. Not the church that has become cowards. Because we don't have any manifestation. So we have to run. I heard a mighty prophet of God a few days ago. He said, why will a shepherd run and go hide in a room somewhere and not be doing video for people when your people need you the most? And I said, okay, I'm going to be coming to the building. Whoever needs to come for healing, come for prayer, come. True story. 
in the nation of Mozambique. A plague broke out and many kids were dying and they had to quarantine many of them. And Heidi Baker called upon the name of the Lord. Anybody know Heidi Baker, Iris Ministry? And she went into the quarantine tent where all these people who they were nothing, who could die were. And stayed in there and began to pray for them. Everybody said she is absolutely nuts this time. How can she go into the quarantine tent? And she stayed there and prayed until those children started to get healed one by one by one. Do we know what kingdom manifestations are? Have we become so void of power? Can you imagine Jesus running around with a mask right now and putting masks on all of his disciples? Can you imagine Jesus saying, Peter, Peter, come here, come here, come here. You need to wear a mask. This stuff is dangerous. Don't be silly. Just, just put on one. James, 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 where are you? you? You put on your mask. Judas, I know you like to be naughty, but put on your mask. No, they carried the atmosphere of heaven. Peter was a man like you and I. There was such a glory atmosphere around him. The Bible said they would lay the sick along the street. If his shadow, with, in other words, if they were just close enough to him for his shadow to be cast, that is how powerful the first field around Peter was. Whether they were paralyzed, blind, deaf, lame, what? We're not talking about fever. We're not talking, kind of stop the people. People get healed even without any medication. I've spoken to somebody who was confirmed to have it. And the person was still talking to me yesterday. Pastor, I don't even know why they're just putting so much fear. It wasn't different from just having a flu. Even when they told me I tested positive, I was just wondering, really, are you sure I tested positive? I said, what medication did you give you? He said, no, they didn't give me any medication. And then began to explain to me all the other pre-existing conditions that people have that makes them more vulnerable. Please, I'm not making a mockery of a virus. I'm not telling you it's not real. I'm not telling you it's not spreading. I'm not telling you you can't hurt people. But I'm saying, what have we made of? Really? Are we that empty now? We've become so dry, we carry nothing? An atmosphere around Peter was raising the sick on the side of the road. What kind of a believer do you want to be in this time? The one that runs into the cave because you're afraid the virus will get you to? Or the ones that will be available to say, come, if you're sick, let me lay hands on you. And you would recover. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever name they call you, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, come out of this body and lose this body alone and let this person be well. Now, in Jesus' name. My Jesus walks into a house where Peter's mother-in-law had a high fever. And the Bible said, and he touched her. Maybe the fever was caused by a virus. It really didn't matter. And he touched her. And immediately, she was healed. And she got up and began to prepare food. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, and those of you watching me over the internet, we need to go get our Bibles out of the cupboards where we put it and read it again. Because it's either we believe this word or we don't believe. Because what is coming, what is coming is worse than coronavirus. We better be ready. The Lord spoke to my heart yesterday. He said this current breed of the church, he said you guys can't make it through the tribulation. You know we say pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib. In other words, rapture before tribulation or rapture after the first three and a half years of tribulation or rapture at the end of it. It better be before tribulation. Because as the church is today, we can't make it. We can't make it. If they tell you you cannot buy bread unless you take the mark, you will see the rate at which people are going to say, but pastor, it's just a little tattoo. But come on, pastor, it's just a little microchip. Come on, pastor, be modern. Be modern, you know. We don't want to touch the cash because, you know, there's virus on the cash. That's what they did to me at the airport yesterday. I tried to pay for coffee. They said, we can't touch your cash. Use your card contactless. I said, ah, I see you. You know, the devil, you can't hide from me. I see you. I know where you're going. You're going to control economics. Then they'll tell you, because cards get stolen. You can't use cash. Card, it means some database system. You've got to understand, I'm a consultant in that area. 
I know the kind of technology that is around in our world. Big data. There's all kinds of data that can be handled now. And it's been done all over the world. African countries in the last few years had to get BVNs and all kinds of stuff because somebody wants to track everybody's penny. Anywhere in the world, third world countries, they can track everything you have. And if they can stop you from using cash and using card alone, oh, 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 oh. Somebody is saying, Pastor, please pray for me. I want to get out. I want to get out quickly. No, he's left you here for a reason. All right, let's do this. Kingdom manifestations, miracles, protection from pestilence, protection from the boars, the lice, all of those things. It's all part of kingdom manifestation. Wealth transfer. Everything that God did for the Hebrews was manifestation of the kingdom. And at the end of the day, the Pharaoh and all the people had to bow. Please look at this. Look at this. Let me just show you this. Exodus chapter 8. Just by the time it got to the third, the third plague. Exodus chapter 8 verse 19. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. You see, when we were dealing with the snake, they did, ah, yeah, we can do that too. Mm, Rod, snake. When it was blood, they say, ah, yeah, we can make some stuff, you know, red, whatever. We can, we can make that happen too. When they got to a certain stage, I think after the lice, they went to Pharaoh. They said, this is the finger of God. Right. In other words, there are some who are part of the Pharaoh system that when the prophets will not back down, when the body begin to rise up, they're going to begin to say, I- I'm not doing no... Let's just leave these people alone. I'm not getting involved. Uh, you know, that, that's, uh, it, it's an expression somewhere where I got raised. That's when somebody's beginning to say, I don't want trouble. The magicians, when they began to see kingdom manifestation, began to say, Mm-mm, this is the finger of God, Pharaoh. But God had already said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Why did God do that? I told you, I said plagues are signs and wonders for unbelievers, for God's children, and for the Pharaohs. Why did God do that? Let's go quickly through the the plagues. I want to just tell you some, give you some expose on the significance of the plagues, and you will see how some of them relate to us. Number one, water to blood. Water sources, what's the significance of that? The water sources were polluted. What was the lesson for the Egyptians to learn? The god of the Nile, Apis, and the goddess of the Nile, Isis, were being judged openly by God. They had a god and a goddess that they believed were the god and the goddess of the Nile. So God displayed, let all the water become blood. And he showed them that the god and the goddess they were worshipping were useless. What should we learn from me today? Only God can bless your water, and only God can secure you from pollution. <laughs> My daughter said something to me. She said, uh, you know, Dad, my teacher in school said some of the masks that people are wearing, that they're just wasting their time. <laughs> said some of the mask is not even secure enough that the size of this Virus droplets can still go in some of them. Do you know that mask is different from mask? They're real proper mask that can really protect you. But there's some of the other ones that people are wearing. The whole thing is crumpled on the side, crumpled here. Air is going in, everything is going in. <laughs> Only God can protect you. Number two, frogs. Frogs everywhere became an absolute nuisance. It was the judgment against the god Heket, H-E-Q-E-T. This is a frog-headed goddess that was worshipped in Egypt as the goddess of birth. This particular goddess, the image of it, has a head of a frog. You got to understand, God was displaying. (laughs) God was displaying to them everything you put your heart on and your allegiance to, I will show you it is useless. So when he began to multiply frogs, what did their God do? And that was the God they believed in as their God of birth. 
What lesson can we learn today? Only God can bless you with fertility. What about the lice and the flies? Parasites that became a nuisance and began to withdraw their peace. You know, lice is parasites. They, they, they go in and they begin to suck your blood. And flies is such a nuisance. Anybody been anywhere in the world where there's flies everywhere? You can't enjoy your food. You can't enjoy anything. You're just, you're just doing that all the while. That was what they were doing in Egypt. But it was also significant. There was a god, a fly god called Uachit. U-A-T-C-H-I-T in Egypt. God was judging that god as well. And was doing it for them to see clearly. What lesson can we learn? Only God can give us comfort. Only God can get rid of parasites. Because by this time, now God said to Moses, all right, from this point on, anything that happens, only those who are not my children, who are rejecting me and turning to false God, only them will suffer it, not you. The boils and the pestilence. It was judgment on the goddess Hathor and the god Apis. This depicted that the false gods cannot heal. The pestilence affected all the animals of the Egyptians. So whatever this virus is, was going into the animals of the Egyptians and killing them. Some of you have heard me say this before. I'm saying it again for the benefit of those who are watching. Everything that can hurt has life. Every virus has life. And everything that has life has ears. Believe me, everything that has life can hear. Trees can hear. Somehow they're flying in the air and they're identifying the animals that belong to the Hebrews and they're saying, don't touch that one. Let's go this way. Okay, you don't believe me with the viruses causing pestilence. What about the locust? How come the locusts flew only to the farms of the Egyptians and ate everything up? But their sat navigation system told them, avoid the farms of the children of Israel. Well, maybe there was no sat nav in those days, but believe me, they were still hearing. Can I tell you something? The one who permits plague can decide what he permits and how far it can go. Isn't he the one that said, there is no temptation, there's no trial, there's no adversity, the word perasmos in the Greek, that has overtaken you that is not common to man. But God is faithful. He's faithful. Who will not allow you to suffer beyond what you're able to bear? Body of Christ, wake up. We can handle this. If we couldn't handle it, God would not have allowed it. It's our wake up call. This is what is going to separate glorious supermarkets from real churches. This is what's going to separate the tears from the wheat. We will know whether we have faith now when a little adversity comes or whether we don't have faith. We will know. We will know the difference. By the way, we claim that we're saved and we're heaven bound. Why are we even afraid of dying? You know how Paul puts it? Paul said to go is preferable. It's game. He said, but you know, for the sake of you guys, I'm just going to stay a little bit longer. But I really want to go. Those who are sure of what, where they're going. Those who are sure of where they're going. The certain parts of the world I was telling my leaders this morning where the pharaoh system has generated terrorists that says if the Christians gather, they will come and slaughter their pastor, they will throw bomb and bomb them. There are certain parts of the world, like northern Nigeria, and the Christians are still coming out. They're still having services. Coronavirus. It's coming to kill me, it's coming to kill me. Again, I'm not making a light of it. I can't help myself. Let me tell you something. I'm filled with something that I cannot even understand these days. Something took place in my heart. And you think, Pastor, why are you being so audacious? I'm even audacious enough to say, let the sick be brought to the kingdom faith church. There are some of us here 
who are bold enough where we lay hands and the sick will be healed. And I'm not saying this to both those of you who know what God has been doing in kingdom encounter services for more than one year now. You've seen it. You've seen people come and get healed within minutes in the sanctuary. You've seen God heal all kinds of things, all kinds of conditions. How many people heard the testimony of the lady who had all kinds of medication she was taking and came to one worship night and the power of God hit her and all medications forget it? Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying myself too much. You've got to just, you know, um, you've got to really bear with me today. What about the hail? Adverse weather conditions. And it was also taking out their crop. It was judgment against not the sky goddess and Osiris, the crop fertility god. You know the Egyptians worship Osiris? Many people don't even know what Osiris looked like. Have you seen the pyramid with one eye? Have you seen the people who still worship him in our world today? The people who are in Egyptology? Have you seen the entertainers in Hollywood? You know, we, we, we do a lot of things. Even Christians would do things like this. Like, come on, let's stop being ignorant. Do you know what it is? It's the one eye of Osiris. And God showed their God, their false God, that you are useless. Stop the hail. They could not stop the hail. Let me give you another one, darkness. Do you know what darkness does? Total darkness of the land made everybody immobile. You can't move in darkness because you're afraid you're going to trip on top of each other. You're afraid you might break your you know, belongings in the house. So when there was total darkness, everybody in Egypt had to stay at home. They could not move until Moses prayed for the darkness to go. It was a judgment against the false son god. Re, R-E. They had a sun god that they worshipped in Egypt. Can you see what God was doing? He was taking out all the gods one by one and showing them that there's no other god but me. And was showing his own covenant children too. No other god but me. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a world today where we can't move around anymore. Before our prayer yesterday evening, the Lord told me, don't think about just natural darkness alone, but think about darkness from the scriptures. We talked about ignorance, false information. Yeah. Jesus said, your eyes is the light of your body. Yeah. He said, if your light is good or your eye is good, your body will have light. But if your eye is diseased, your body will be filled with darkness. What darkness is he talking about? Ignorance, lies. So our world is experiencing the kind of darkness now that has made everybody immobile. Everybody is in their room. What if it had never been announced in the news media that there was any virus at all? How many people would have thought twice if they had a cough or they had a flu? or they, How many people would have stopped their lives if they had not heard a report that you can die, your family can die, because die, die, die really is the boss word. It's not recover. Die is the boss word. How many have died? How many have died? How many have died? Darkness made them immobile in Egypt. They couldn't do anything. Who can go to work? Total darkness. There's no, no light outside. And God showed them, you've been worshipping the sun God. Your son God Re is useless. If I take away light, tell your Re to bring back the light. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to be able to move again, we're going to have to move based on the light of God. It cannot be the light of our government. You're going to have to pray, God, get rid of all the darkness that are permitted in me and give me your light so that, did I not say my word? That my word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's the word of God. That's what is going to give you guidance in this season. Last one, death of the firstborn child. Firstborn is the inheritance. Firstborn is the legacy. 
There was also the god of Isis that they worshipped in Egypt and they believed that god was the protector of their children. God wanted to demonstrate to them, go and call your Isis to come and raise your children now when they get taken out. So ladies and gentlemen, the plagues were a showdown. It was power show. The plagues was not to destroy covenant children, but it was a power show to the unbelievers. The God of football. Mariba Subrakidi Bakadaya. How many people will give up worshipping God in church for the football game? In the United States of America, the God of basketball, where is it? The God of Hollywood, the God of entertainment. How many theater shows are you watching now? How many movies are you watching in the cinemas? The God of entertainment and the pub. If we don't have pub, we cannot be happy. Well, you better learn to be happy now because there's no pub. The God of nightclub and the reveling and the enjoyment. Let me tell you something. Pay attention. God is demonstrating. I can shut down everything that you people have put your faith in that is your source of joy. So I can shut down your company. I can shut down your job. I can allow everything to be shut down. I can allow everything to be shaken until you all come to know that there is a God in heaven. If you can't play matches, stadiums can't make money, clubs can't make money, the sports channels can't make money, the athletes getting tens of thousands per week, where are they going to get it from? Let me tell you something, God can disrupt, he can turn everything upside down in our world and then we will wake up and then we will realize, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to call upon the name of the Lord. I want to bring this to an end with this. I've been going on for a little while. How is this story supposed to end? What's going on in our world now? How is it supposed to end? Exodus chapter 12. Have you gotten something out of this message? Are you encouraged? Are you strengthened? Can we see that Bible days are here again? Yes. Can we see that we have ancient landmarks Amen. that we can follow? So rather than being afraid, we will flow with God. Amen. I want to ask everybody, just give me the next few minutes. Please, I beg you about the distractions and the walking up and down. Next few minutes. Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 to 36. Exodus chapter 12. Verses 31 to 36. I want to show you how this story is supposed to end. When you're there, say amen. amen. After Pharaoh and the systems of Pharaoh have bowed. <laughs> See, sometimes when, when God is allowing the kingdom of darkness and the agent of darkness to do stuff. They think they've got a corner on God. But they don't know that God is just allowing it. A funny statement that I always hear a preacher says, if the devil had only known that by killing Jesus, it would lead to billions of Christians on the earth, he would have killed everybody that tried to kill Jesus. He would have gotten the finest doctors, the finest bodyguards. He would have done everything to make sure that Jesus stays alive. If only he had known. Because they said hell was rejoicing and the demons were rejoicing. They said we have killed the son of God. They did not know that God had another move. Let me tell you something. The pharaohs of our world today, if only they know that they are being set up for some serious whooping. And that God still has another move. And the children of God are going to come out triumphant. Churches are going to grow. The body of Christ will advance. Wealth is coming into the kingdom of God. Sons and daughters of God are going to shine. 
They're going to see at the end of it that we come out unscathed. No boil, no virus, nothing shall by any means harm us. And then the world will realize if we had known, we shouldn't have tried to tamper with God's workings and creation. See how it ends. Exodus chapter 12, verse 31. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and be gone. And bless me also. Ooh, hey. You want blessing now? I thought you made fun of the God of Moses. I thought you made fun of the prophet. The pharaohs. The Bible says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though darkness may be upon the face of the earth, and even gross darkness the people, but the glory of God will light upon you, and the Gentiles will come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. The pharaohs are coming. Amen. They're going to come secretly. Amen. Pastor Daniel, I've been watching you. Please bless me. Amen. Would you bless me? Amen. They're going to come to you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Believe me. They're going to come to you. Like the only sister that I know that was tested positive, she said people at work are coming and saying, wow, what is this, your strength? How did you go through this? No medication? How did you get healed so quickly? And now she said, Pastor, she said to me, yes, she said, Pastor Daniel, now I'm preaching to all of them. Now they're all open to hear about God because they're all afraid. I'm the one that had it. Now they're seeing that my God has come true for me. So now I have an opportunity to tell them about my God. Verse 33, and the Egyptians urged the people that they might send them out of the land in a haste, and they said, we shall all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, having their kneading bowls bound in their clothes on their shoulder. But the children of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, and they had asked from the Egyptians articles of silver, Articles of gold and clothing. And the Lord has given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they granted them what they requested and they plundered the Egyptians. We're going to plunder the systems of Pharaoh. What was planned to arrest us? What was planned to cause the children of God to lose their job, lose their mind, lose everything? We are coming out. Plundering. We're coming out winning. I'm saying this for every believer that is listening to the sound of my voice. Don't be afraid. When you come out of this, you're not coming out empty. By the time they say coronavirus is over, you are not coming out empty. You are coming out with the things that Pharaoh and the system of Pharaoh had robbed you of for a long time. Because there's a shift that is happening in our world and there's a wealth transfer that is going on. People are losing money, but some are selling all kinds of things. Some stores are making six months worth of sales in six days. Fear. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's having different effects. Some people are dumping their stocks and some are picking it up cheap. We're going to round up today by partaking of communion. First, I'm going to share this because I just have that much confidence in God. Thank you very much. I have that much confidence in God. I heard in my spirit one day, son, prepare for Passover this year because it will be a major celebration. Because by the time that Passover comes, you'll be celebrating that this has passed over. God had told the children of Israel to prepare before the last plague. The spirit of death was going to visit the land. God was going to permit the spirit of death to take out the inheritance and the heritage of the Egyptians. All the firstborns. All the firstborns were going to be wiped out. 
And God told his own covenant children. He said, take a lamb, a precious lamb. Slaughter the lamb and take the blood and put it on your lintels and your doorpost. He said, when the angel of death is coming through the land, it will pass over. When the angels are coming, it will what? Pass over. Somebody say pass over. Somebody say this coronavirus thing is going to pass over. It's not coming into my house. How about you? It's not going to touch my children. It's not going to touch my wife. It's going to pass over. And on one of the commemorations or the celebrations of the Passover, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us a covenant practice. For those of you who are watching from home, if you can, find some sort of unleveled bread cracker, maybe some black orange juice or red wine. Go get it quickly and join us because we're going to partake of the communion together. For the Jews, God said to them, celebrating the Passover, well, let me be very careful, not even say Jews, for the covenant children of God, because they were the only ones who had a covenant with God, the descendants of Jacob at that time. God said to them, from now on, in this month, on this day, you will partake of a Passover meal in remembrance of what I did for you. So centuries later, they were still doing it. When they walked away from God and they had forgotten about celebrating the feast and Passover, God raised kings that reminded them, kings like Hezekiah, Hezekiah found the scriptures and saw it and said, Hey, look at what we've not been doing. You see, because covenant practices, it puts an edge around covenant children. That's why I said what I said during the offering. Your tithe is the edge of protection around your finances. The devil is hoping, give it up. You will suffer. Hey, he's waiting. He's just waiting for God's children that are going to break the edge of protection. The same way the blood of Jesus is our edge of protection. I encourage families, if you can partake every day, there's no rule against it. Every day, if you like, father, mother, children, take communion, mother, children, father, children, however your family is constructed, and partake on a daily basis. Jesus said on that day during the Passover, he said, he took the bread and he said to the disciples, this is my body broken for you. Ladies and gentlemen, he had not even gone to the cross yet. They had not even beaten him once yet. But he was speaking it because it had to come to pass. He said, as often as you eat it, eat it in remembrance of me. Today we're going to eat and we're going to declare no virus, no sickness, no accident Amen. nothing shall hurt Amen. our own bodies Amen. because Jesus has already paid a price for us with his own body let's eat together the spirit of fear just packing its load and running as far as it can just running as far as it can the demons are telling themselves we told you you should have stayed away from that kingdom free church we told you you should have stayed away from them those people they pray too much in the name of Jesus Christ then Jesus took the cup he said this is my blood poured out for you again brethren as of that time he had not shed one drop of his blood but from the time of the exodus when God showed his mighty deliverance for his children and God said be commemorating this you see, the Bible calls it a holy convocation it was supposed to be maintained until the day that the precious lamb of God will shed his blood you see, the blood in the time of the Passover 
it only helped the covenant children of God, the Hebrews. But this blood is available to help all of mankind. Jesus shed his blood. You're watching me, you're out there. I'm going to give you an opportunity in a second to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior because all the stuff that you've been hearing me say, if you're not blood bought, blood washed, what do you mean? If you have not asked God to forgive you of your sins, if you have not chosen to put your faith in Jesus Christ of Nazareth to be your Lord and Savior, everything you've heard me preach is not for you. You are not secure. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the truth. You're not safe without Jesus. We are bold to say what we say. We are bold. I'm bold to preach because of the blood that protects me. So get ready. You're going to pray in a second. But for all the believers out there and the ones that are in the house, let's drink to the power of the blood of Jesus to cleanse us of sins to heal us, to deliver us, to protect us, even protect our belongings in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's partake of the blood together. Thank you, Lord. And just while we're where we're at, ushers, just hold on. Don't, don't take anything yet. Let's just hold on for a second. I just want to do this very quickly. You may be in this building right now. The honest truth is you, you've not been sure about your salvation. Please, ladies and gentlemen, at this point in time, we really need to reverence the Spirit of the Lord. If truth be told, it's possible that in the last few days, the thought of the virus has scared you. You've thought, God, I don't want to die. You've been afraid Maybe not even 100% sure where you're going to go if you die. You're also watching me from home. You don't know what will happen to you. What if you got a virus? What if you die? Do you know where you're going to? Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to hear my heart really well. God in his word teaches us. He said, don't be afraid of the first death. That's not the significant one. But rather be afraid of the second one. In the first one, our physical body shuts down. And we go to this paradise place. But then we will be judged. And those who die, having rejected Jesus Christ, the only precious Lamb of God, the Bible says they will experience a second death. The second death is permanent separation from God for eternity. If you're listening to me and you're under the sound of my voice, I want to give you an opportunity to pray a prayer. A very simple prayer of putting your faith in Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that if you will believe in your heart and you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. For the Bible says, For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible also says, If you say you have no sin, you lie and you deceive yourself and there's no truth in you. But if you will confess your sins, God is faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. For the moment, just with head bowed in the room, and wherever you are, if you know you need an assurance of salvation. If you know that there's still a bit of fear and trepidation in your heart about what will happen to you if you will die this very day, I want you to just lift up your right hand. You're not lifting up your hand for me. You're lifting up the hand that heaven may recognize it. Just lift up your hands and say, I'm not ashamed to pray and identify with Jesus. Now I ask you to pray a prayer after me. Would you pray after me right now? Say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that you gave your son Jesus to come into this world and die on the cross for my sins. Jesus, go ahead, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me 
I confess every sin, everything I ever did wrong, even this week. Lord, you see what man did not see. Please forgive me. I ask you to come into my heart and my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give my life to you, Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, I ask that you would come and fill me and lead me and guide me and help me to live the rest of my life as a child of God.